Hello. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to nucleophilic aromatic substitution. Um, so I want to start off by talking about the conversion of benzene to phenol. Um, and in a previous video uh, on electrophilic aromatic ar substitution, I had noticed that this is a reaction that's really difficult to be done directly uh, by electrophilic aromatic substitution. Uh, there's no convenient, suitable OH electrophile source. Uh, and so this reaction, there's just no way that this is going to work out. However, that's not to say you can't do this conversion, but you're going to need an intermediate compound. And so, for example, uh, we know that hydroxide is much more likely to, you know, OH is much more associated with hydroxide as a nucleophile. And so if we have a leaving group like chlorine on the aromatic ring, we can do some sort of nucleophilic substitution and get phenol out. And we also know how to make chlorobenzene from benzene using an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. So uh, in the next several videos, we're gonna talk about these conditions because they can vary a lot depending on other substituents. But it's just worth noting that this reaction is not as friendly uh, as you might be used to. Uh, I'll say this is going to be done in water. And at room temperature, there's essentially no reaction. Uh, this is a reaction that does not behave like an SN2 reaction. Uh, so, so the types of things that promote SN2, so even if I switch to a product or an aprotic solvent, uh, isn't going to help here. Now, there are going to be some variations of this reaction that will work at room temperature or at lower temperatures, but this is not one of them. If instead we did this like in 100 degrees Celsius or higher, and you might wonder how uh, how we can go higher. Well, you can do it in a pressure cooker or something. Um, at 100 degrees Celsius, this reaction will eventually work. The yields won't be great, but, but it'll work. As I mentioned, if there are other substituents on here, the reaction might work at lower temperatures, which uh, is helpful. I'm glancing over the side trying to find where I have written down what the yield of this reaction is. So I'm not going to talk about the mechanism of this reaction right now. I'm actually going to save that to the next video where we talk about this version of the nucleophilic aromatic substitution. Uh, the other thing that's worth sharing about nucleophilic aromatic substitution is that nucleophilic ar aromatic substitution encompasses a range of several different reactions that have different mechanisms. It's not like electrophilic aromatic substitution where once the electrophile is generated, you have um, a pretty similar mechanism on the aromatic ring. There are at least three different mechanisms that I'm going to present to you uh, for this reaction, and depending on the nucleophile, the leaving group, and the other conditions. And the other functional groups present on the ring. So there's a number of variables that can come into play here. Right. Stay tuned uh, for the addition, elim or the, uh, the addition elimination version. Thank you for watching.